If I were being a little bit provocative, I'd say, well, there's lots of good teachers out there that can get involved in CME. Why does CME actually need pharma? Well, I'm going to take that as a two-part question. First thing you said is there's a lot of good teachers out there. I would say there's good educators out there. And if you use the hashtag good educator on Twitter, you can see what I write about as far as being the criteria of being a good educator. But you need good content and good educational design, good curriculum and the right learners for a good educator to be able to say that the CME that they have is effective. So um, that's, that's sort of part one. Part two, why do we need pharma? We need the appropriate resources and support so that we can develop the education that really uh, is able to reach the learners on a variety of platforms, face-to-face, -face, live, uh, online, mobile, whatever the platform. And the reality is the money doesn't exist. You know, it, it doesn't come from too many other places. So pharma has a very important role, not just as the supporter, but as a key stakeholder within the CME community. But part of what we need them for is their support of good, appropriate CME that really meets the needs of their customers. It's not a direct link, so CME isn't a promotional activity. But they have served such an incredibly valuable role, an appropriate role, when we think about industry-supported CME over the last 10 or 15 years, that the good quality education that, that many of those good educators have developed may not have been able to be developed but for the support of pharma. Now you mentioned there about CME not being promotional, but of course there are issues around transparency, around trust, around potential bias and conflict of interest with pharma. So how does the industry overcome these issues when it comes to CME? Well, that's a fundamentally flawed question, my friend, because pharma doesn't deliver CME. Right? But I understand where you're going with that, so I, I didn't mean to, to correct you, but I had to. Um, conflict of interest, bias, transparency, all serve to make CME better. CME by definition needs to be independent. So if we have good rules to identify the potential for conflict of interest, identify and search for and correct any evidence of bias, and transparency about who provided the funding, who the, the faculty were, how the activity was developed, makes for a learning activity that's pristine, that nobody can question. Even though pharma provided the support, policies, procedures, and guidelines were in place to ensure that the learners are not getting something that's anything but independent medical education that's free from conflict of interest, that's free from bias, and of the highest quality. Who do you think is delivering really good CME at the moment? Who would you regard as, I guess, beacons of good practice? Huh. So, uh, the list of good quality CME providers is a lot longer than the list of bad quality sham CME providers. Uh, it, it, it would be self-serving for me to say, well, my companies, because we have several, uh, are, are the best providers of CME, what I would say is, if you go to the major CME meetings, I mean the ones where we as CME educators uh, get together to talk about best practices, and you look around the room, you'll see the people who understand that they need to continue to learn more about CME, and those people represent the private companies, specialty societies, and universities that are committed to developing and providing good quality CME. I'm not going to give you a list of companies that do it right because then I'm going to leave somebody out or uh, if I don't say something then it may be taken that I'm saying they don't deliver good CME. So I have to preserve my reputation, see Paul. But I will say that there are a lot of good providers of CME and it's really in the hands of the learners, the doctors, the nurses, the pharmacists, whoever's taking the course to be the judge of whether it meets their needs and they're satisfied because although we have to measure changes in competence and performance and patient outcomes and all that stuff I talked about before, they also need to participate and be satisfied.